Legendary investor Bill Miller once said, the world is made of stories, not atoms. So most investors actually approach a company by dissecting into their numbers, ratios, and even some analyst forecasts. While there's a value in that approach, Bill Miller argues there's a better way. One that focuses on narratives and understanding the company as a story. So rather than just breaking a company down into parts, it's about building a cohesive, compelling narrative from all the pieces that you can pick up. So for example, when pitching an idea to a portfolio manager, a strong approach might sound something like this. So I want to talk to you about stock X. It's currently trading at $2.25. The 52-week range is between $2 to $4. And the all-time high was $100 back in 2000. I believe it's a buy, and here's the five reasons why. And after laying out your key points clearly and confidently, you move to valuation. So the stock is trading at just over $2. I believe it's worth roughly $6 to $8, and here's why. Now, here are the risks. And then, simply finish your story. And following this powerful storytelling approach, today, I want to share a story about ASML. And for those unfamiliar, ASML describes itself as the world's supplier to the semiconductor industry. So based in the Netherlands, ASML actually designs and manufactures photolithography systems, highly complex machines that are essential to producing microchips. In fact, it's the only company in the world capable of building extreme ultraviolet lithography machines, which are required to make the most advanced semiconductor and the 3NM node and beyond. So without ASML, companies like TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor, Samsung, and even Intel wouldn't be able to produce the chips that powers everything from your iPhone to supercomputers to even AI models. And the stock currently trades at around $672 per share, and the 52-week range is between $578 to $1,110. And it depends on the mood of the US president. And it's currently down more than 40% from its all-time highs. So many investors actually see ASML primarily as a cyclical semiconductor stock facing multiple macroeconomic concerns, including potential semiconductor tariffs under the Trump 2.0 administration, CAPEX pullbacks from key customers like Intel and Samsung, and increasing competition from emerging Chinese lithography technologies. However, beneath these headlines lies an alternative narrative. So we believe that ASML is a uniquely positioned company with monopoly-like characteristics, deeply integrated into the semicon ecosystem, yet potentially misunderstood by the much broader market. And from this perspective, this creates an intriguing case. A company with a robust competitive mode, undervalued growth potential, and earnings that could be significantly more resilient than commonly appreciated. And based on our own internal assumptions, we estimate that ASML's intrinsic value could be potentially within the range of $750 to $900 per share. So please note that this is not a recommendation to buy or sell the stock, and all projections involve a degree of uncertainty. And here are five reasons supporting our view. But before we dive into the reasons, if you enjoy deep dives like this one, breaking down business models, market dynamics, and a potential investment idea, you'll love what we've just built. So we've just launched a free weekly newsletter called Investing Bytes. So each issue actually delivers bite-sized lessons, timeless investing principles, and real-world stories straight from our team. And here's the kicker. At the start of every month, we spotlight one high-quality company we are watching closely with our internal thesis and why it matters. So if you want to sharpen your thinking and stay updated on opportunities beyond the noise, just hit the link in the description box down below. We'll send the latest issue of Investing Bytes straight to your inbox. Now, back to our five core theses. First, ASML's dominance in the advanced lithography space appears nearly unrivaled, and it holds a whopping 100% market share in the EUV lithography equipment space. And it's the essential technology behind the world's most advanced semiconductor nodes. And we cast our eyes to look at the broader patterning market, which involves older, deep ultraviolet and legacy technologies, which is the DUV market for short, ASML's market share is right around 70 to 80%. And this is because competitors like Nikon and Canon continues to supply DUV machines used in this mid and older generation chip making. Still, ASML's position in the high-end segment is not easily replicable. It's actually safeguarded by physics level precision. And the company co-owns Carl Zeiss SMT, whose optical systems must meet atomic level tolerance. And to grasp the level of precision involved, if one of Zeiss's lens was scaled, 
to the size of Germany, the maximum allowable deviation would be smaller than the width of a human hair. And that's how unforgiving the requirements are. And competing firms are nowhere near this bar. So Canon's nano-imprint lithography remains a niche solution with limited commercial adoption. And Huawei's laser-based EUV alternative, which is called LDP, while theoretically promising, still faces formidable engineering challenges. So what sounds good in theory might be extremely hard to execute in reality. And this actually suggests minimal competitive pressures for ASML in the near term. Second, the structural growth of artificial intelligence seems poised to drive semiconductor demand much higher for longer in the years to come. So AI workloads, particularly inference and reasoning application, may require significantly greater computational power. And NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang actually highlighted this trend, noting that the advanced AI models coming out from DeepSeek, such as the DeepSeek R1, actually dramatically increase the higher computational resources by maybe even up to 100 times more than the traditional models. So this translates to an exponential need for advanced chip architecture, potentially benefiting demand for ASML's lithography systems. Furthermore, their business model isn't solely dependent on just selling new machines. It's the installed based management division, which offers upgrade, maintenance, and inspection services. And historically, they actually demonstrated counter-cyclical behavior. In essence, even if the economy goes into a recession, they will still have to maintain and upkeep existing machines. Indeed, historical data over the last two decades indicates that the install base revenue tends to increase when new system sales weakens, potentially offering some sort of stability to their earnings in the traditional semicon equipment space. Third, recent macroeconomic and geopolitical concerns may have created an overly pessimistic sentiment around the stock. So reduced capital expenditure from Intel and Samsung coupled with the tariff uncertainty. It's basically a double whammy to ASML and it has even led them to lower their 2025 revenue guidance modestly, from 30 to 40 billion to 30 to 35 billion euros, which actually caused their shares to decline pretty significantly. Yet, ASML actually reaffirmed their long-term guidance for 2030. And this probably suggests that the management team maintains confidence in their long-term demand despite the near-term volatility. And Taiwan Semiconductor also plan to increase their capital expenditure of around $10 billion for 2025. And this further supports continued demand for their systems, potentially offsetting the weakness elsewhere. Fourth, market perceptions may underestimate ASML's production capacity growth. So while management currently guides for an annual EUV system delivery of roughly 80 to 110 units by 2030, some analysts have accounted for a confirmed expansion in the assembly line yield improvement, and reduction in cycle time, which actually suggests a possible capacity of up to 129 units per year. And these ASML systems actually amount to roughly $300 to $380 million per unit. And if the projection comes true, it will materially enhance ASML's future revenue guidance. And last but not least, the fifth point. The stock's valuations may not actually fully reflect its underlying business strength. So ASML currently trades at approximately 25 times forward earnings a valuation that might seem modest for a company with such a near monopoly status in the advanced lithography space. However, it is also important to recognize that ASML operates within the highly cyclical semicon space, where demand actually fluctuates based on the broader market conditions. And despite the cyclicality, ASML has consistently demonstrated robust business fundamentals. So from 2018 to 2024, the company achieved an average annual increase of about 10% in terms of their pricing for their EUV systems. And this actually reflects pretty strong pricing power and them having the ability to maintain growth and also profitability, even amidst the industry's inherent volatility. Nevertheless, it is also critical to acknowledge the key risks to this narrative clearly. So for one, customer concentration risk. So ASML derives approximately 80% of its revenue from the three major customers, TSMC, Intel, and Samsung. And any significant changes in these companies' capital expenditure plans can materially impact ASML's financial performance. So for instance, in 2024, the company's annual report highlighted the uncertainties over export controls and the macroeconomic conditions. And this led to reduced customer demand, with companies like TSM, Samsung, SK Hynix, SMIC, and even Intel exercising caution in their spending. Risk number two, emerging concerns from China. So China accounted for 36% of ASML's sales in 2024. But due to the increasing amount of restrictions, this is expected to decline to around 20% in this year alone. 
So China is also investing heavily in developing its own EUV lithography capabilities. And in 2025, reports actually indicated that Chinese companies, including Huawei and SMIC, are making significant progress in developing their own systems. So while these efforts are still in the infant stage, it may not pose an immediate threat to ASML's dominance, they actually represent a long-term competitive risk. And risk number three, adoption. So ASML's next generation EUV systems are expected to be the significant growth driver post-2027. However, the adoption of this advanced tech actually carries a lot of inherent risks. So potential delays or even slower than expected uptake by customers could negatively affect ASML's future growth prospects. So the complexity and the cost associated with these high NA EUV systems may also pose challenges to widespread adoption. So in closing, the ASML narrative presents a compelling blend of monopoly-like positioning, AI-driven growth tailwinds, a misunderstood resiliency in their earnings model, and a potentially favorable risk-reward profile at current market pricing. So for anyone looking for companies that has a near monopoly status, I think ASML is a pretty interesting case study, given its current low in the semicon supply chain. So do leave in the comment section down below on your thoughts about ASML as a potential investment opportunity and whether you have it in your own investment portfolio. And this is CK from Piranha Profit signing off. Till next time, keep winning.